Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be more of a lesson style video and I'm gonna to talk to you all about the two main ideas that I like to think of when I am extending into the upper register on the trombone and when I am playing higher. I'm also gonna show you a few quick warm up exercises that you can use when you are practicing these concepts. So if you wanna know how to play higher on the trombone, if you wanna extend your range, please keep watching. So two of the top performing videos on my channel have been from my Play High series. How to play high on trombone with Over the Rainbow and how to play high on trombone with Swan Lake. And I utilized the melodies from these two famous songs and brought them up one half step at a time to work on your range. This is a great concept that I love doing in my own playing. So I've gotten a lot of feedback on these videos, a lot of questions. You all have been watching them. They're certainly performing really well, doing really well on my channel. So as always, I want to make the kind of content that you want to see. So when I see a certain type of video is doing really well, obviously I'm going to make more of that kind of video. So this month I'm going to be coming out with another Play High video. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I'll give you a hint. It's a Christmas tune. And just like the other videos, um, Over the Rainbow and Swan Lake, over on my website you can get the audio downloads like for the track, and as well as for Swan Lake you can get the sheet music. You'll be able to get the sheet music for this Christmas tune as well. All you have to do is go over to my website. It's over at lisaliztrombo.com. So before that video comes out, I really wanted to do like a lesson style kind of video explaining kind of what I think about. Um, these videos are great kind of warm up routines for getting in the high register, but I really didn't explain in the videos how you do it. So this is kind of like how to play high on the trombone explained. I'm gonna go over some of those concepts. I'm gonna go over what I like to think about. So then you can go back and watch those videos, play along and kind of apply these concepts. Before I tell you my tips for playing in the high register and what I like to think about when I'm practicing and playing up there, I wanna talk about something else. And this is the biggest overarching comment I have when you're trying to play high notes, just relax. I can't tell you how many people I see They'll go to play a high note. This is for all brass players, not just trombones. And they will literally go like this. I mean, all of a sudden, their shoulders come up, they tense up, they squeeze, they jam the horn on their face, and it's just the most tension I've ever seen. That is only going to hurt you. That's not gonna help you. So before we even get into the details, the biggest thing is just relax. You shouldn't approach the notes in the high register any differently from the register that you're comfortable with. You know, keep your shoulders down, keep your neck open, everything, just take a breath and play. There shouldn't be any difference in your body. You shouldn't be jamming the mouthpiece on your bass. So that's the first thing I wanna tell everyone. So a good way to monitor this is go ahead and play looking into a mirror. The mirror's not gonna lie. You can see if you're doing anything weird with your body, if you're putting the horn on your face, creating pressure, any of that. So check that out. That's kind of the first thing. Just relax, make sure there's no tension in your body. The tension is only going to hurt you. So the two main concepts that I like to think about when I'm playing into the higher register or taking something up one half step at a time like I've done in my other videos is this concept of O to E. I talk about this a lot with my students. It's such a helpful idea. The idea is it's about the shape of I guess the back of your throat um, or your mouth. So when you say O like literally say the letter O, O. Just kind of realize what your throat and your mouth is doing and where your tongue is in your mouth. O, O. So your tongue is down pretty low in your mouth. Now say E, E, same thing. Kind of keep track of what's going on inside your mouth. E, your tongue is much higher up. So that idea that O and O shape is for low notes and an E is for high notes. So this concept of O to E, O, E, O, E, O, this would be your tongue, O, E, O. So that is probably the thing that I think about the most when I am going into the higher register or just doing lip, lip slurs, right? helpful concept. So go ahead and play a lip slur like that. Just check it out. See if you feel that. The next concept I'd like to think about, for me personally, I probably think about the O to E idea a little more, but I have had students that like this idea better. So it's really up to you what you find more helpful. 
The second concept I like to think about is the idea of pointing your airstream downward as you go higher. So everybody take up your hand like this in front of your face and just blow air onto your hand. The air should be blowing straight. Now, move your hand down a little, but don't move your head and then blow air on your hand. So now the air is pointing down. So this idea here. And I can even go all the way down here with my air. Yeah, so that kind of idea too, as you go to a higher note, angle the air down a little bit. And this is very, very slight. I'm doing this movement here just to kind of show you an example. It, it's, it's not that large of a movement. It's very, very slight. So I'm gonna try to use this to demonstrate the air. You can also think about that. So it's all about what works for you. Go ahead and explore those two concepts and see which one works. Which one do you like better? Which one works for you? These are definitely gonna help you if you're doing those exercises, um, you know, going up one half step at a time, keeping these concepts in mind. So this is a pretty common exercise. I've heard a lot of brass players play it and it's called octave rips. I don't know, I just came up with that name because that's what it is. We are ripping up the partials and we are doing it one octave at a time. So my inspiration when I play these are French horn rips. That's just kind of an effect that French horns do a lot, but they can be even helpful on trombone or any brass instrument. So what a rip is, is you're kind of just ripping through the partials or hitting all the partials really quickly. So for example, if you're going from F to F, you're hitting all those partials in between. So you're hitting the F, the B flat, the D, and then the F. So if you were to do it slow, it's kind of just like a really fast lip slur and then do it as a rip. And this is a really great way to practice those two concepts we talked about earlier, the O to E idea, O E, O E, or if you like to think of the airstream pointing downwards, right? You can kind of think of those two things. Like I said, play around with it. Decide which concept works better for you, or it might be a combination of the two of those things. So let's give it a try. Let's go all the way. Um, we're gonna start on a low B flat, and then we're gonna go up one half step at a time. Here we go. there on the F to F. So when you're doing these, it's okay to go through slow. It's okay to take breaks. I took a couple breaks when I was doing that um, just to get the blood flowing back to your lips and everything to get ready for the next half step. Let's do that one more time. make sure you're taking stock of what's going on inside your mouth. What's happening with your throat, right? O to E, if you're making changes there, if you're changing your airstream. The point is you need to realize what you're changing and then remember how to do it. You need to be able to recall this information once you figure it out.
So you can totally change this exercise up. You can change the positions. I tried a few different ones as I was doing it. Like you can keep everything in their natural positions. So for instance, if I was going D to D, I could play the D in fourth and then the D in first. Or I can go D to D out in fourth utilizing an alternate position. Or another really cool thing to do, I'm a huge fan of this, is moving the slide outward or playing against the grain as you do it. So going back from that F to F, we can keep it in first position there or we can hit that higher F out in sixth. And playing against the grain is an interesting skill to be able to have. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. Really, you should be able to play any of these in any of the different positions and experiment doing them in different ways. Another cool thing to do is you could do them up and then back down. Try out stuff like that. Just have fun with it. And again, go through it slow so you can realize what is going on here and what you need to change. The next exercise I'm going to show you is actually one of my favorites. It's my favorite to do when I am kind of running short on time and I still want to get in a high register exercise in my warm up. It's pretty quick. Same thing as the rips, right? You can just rip up to those high notes really fast. Same thing with this. You can go through really quickly, but at the same time, you can go through slowly and really keep track of where you need to change, you know, the inside of your mouth or your airstream. So this one is pretty familiar exercise again. A lot of trombonists do it. We're just gonna utilize glisses to get up to the higher register. So I'll walk you through the exercise. We'll go through it slowly and then we'll play the whole thing. So here we go. Um, first thing you're gonna do is find that middle F. Then find it out in sixth position. Might take a few times to get the pitch just right, but make sure you find it out there. And then we're going to gliss up to a B flat. Next thing, you're going to find that B flat out in fifth. Then gliss up to a D. Then you're going to find that D out in fourth. Then we glissed up to the F. Now we'll find the F all the way out in sixth. Then we did the F up to the high B flat. So this is a really important one for a lot of trombonists. That high B flat is a very important note and we all need to have it. So if you're struggling getting up to that high B flat, this is what I recommend. Play that F in first, put it out in sixth, and then go up one half step at a time. That was to an F sharp. to a G. Here, let's go to A flat now. Now to A. Now up to B flat. if you're going through nice and slow like that you can start to pinpoint exactly kind of where the top of your range is or you need to start making some changes um, that's a really useful one obviously you can keep going from there there's the D D to F. Now let's try for that high B flat. This is certainly where my ceiling is. We'll see if it happens today. So I was able to squeak out that high B flat, but it's certainly not strong, but I'm glad I can at least squeak it out. I definitely, you know, would like to work on strengthening the sound of that, but that's the concept with those glisses. So now let's kind of go through and try to put the whole thing together. I'll show you what it looks like if you were just to play the whole thing straight through. A 
again, couldn't quite get it there, but I'm trying. So that would be an example for me of I would take that high F up to the high, high B flat and do that one half step at a time. So I could really just try to go up slowly. So don't worry, everyone has a different range, a different place of where you are, but the idea is no matter how high you can play, no matter how low you can play, you wanna be working on it every day to be able to play higher and lower. And if you do stuff like this every day, your range is definitely going to improve. Thank you for joining me in this how to play high on trombone explained lesson style video. I hope you found it helpful. Please let me know down in the comments if you did find it helpful or if you have any questions about anything. Also down in the comments, if you have any other tips for playing in the high register, maybe you do something different. Maybe you think of a different concept. Please let us all know down in the comments. I'm sure everyone will wanna know and we're all here for each other to keep getting better. So go ahead and work on these concepts on your own and later this month you can apply them to my new how to play high on trombone video. Again, it's a holiday video. I'm gonna have the sheet music and the audio track available on my website, lisaliztrombone.com. Can't wait to share it with you. And all the regular announcements. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. I have a new video every week and I would love your support. If you found this lesson style video helpful and you wanna take a lesson with me, a private lesson, I do teach lessons over Zoom. So please get a hold of me. I am adding new students. I have a lessons website that I will leave down in the description, or you can send me a DM anytime on any social media platform at Lisa Liz Trombone. Let's talk. Last but not least, if you wanna support me and you wanna support the future of this YouTube channel, please consider becoming a donor over on Patreon. My donors over there are awesome. We have a community, we have a Facebook group page. You have access to audio downloads, sheet music, early viewings of all my videos, and you know that you'll be helping the future of this YouTube channel. I have some exciting purchases coming up that I couldn't have done without the help of my patrons, so thank you. All right, everyone, thank you again for watching the video, and I will see you next week. Bye.